Unless you're a backup goalkeeper, no one likes being on the bench as you sit there getting paid for doing absolutely nought other than occasionally running up and down the touchline hoping your star jumps and stretches will impress your manager enough to put you on. However, there are some players who just live their footballing lives on the bench. Let's take a look at every Premier League club's bench warmer. Arsenal, Mohamed El Nenny. The Egyptian midfielder is hardly a key component at the Emirates Stadium, which explains exactly why he's on the bench most Saturday afternoons. Sorry, Sundays. I forgot all about Arsenal's epic Europa League journey. El Nenny has enjoyed a bit more of a run in the team as of late, but before the European fixtures caused a bit of a pileup for Wenger, the 25-year-old is spending all of his time with a huge coat on, trying to stay warm on the Arsenal bench. So far this season, El Nenny has made 12 appearances and just two of them have came off the bench, showing just how useless an option he is as a substitute. Bournemouth, Lise Mousset When you think of Bournemouth strikers, this isn't the first name that comes to mind, considering he sounds more like a delicious dessert than a prolific goalscorer. The French forward moved to Dean Court in 2016 and has since took a residency on Eddie Howe's bench, spending a grand total of 1 day, 11 hours and 38 minutes on the bench this campaign. Mousset has made 19 appearances so far this season, 17 of which have came off the bench. Brighton, Connor Goldson when certain players are performing well, it's certainly to the detriment of someone else. At the Amex, Brighton have a rock-solid partnership with Shane Duffy and Lewis Dunk, a pairing that has been in force all season under Chris Hutton, meaning backup centre-half Connor Goulton has had to settle for a place on the bench and the odd cup appearance. So far this season, Goulton has been on the bench for one day, 13 hours and 30 minutes, but at least he hasn't scored a million and one own goals like Lewis Dunk, so at least his pride remains intact. Burnley, Ashley Westwood Sean Dyche's team have been fantastic this season, somehow competing with Arsenal for 6th place. This is a team that was tipped for relegation at the start of the season and there have been so many stars to come out of Turf Moor this term. One of them isn't Ashley Westwood however, as he's been busy playing tiddlywinks at Pokemon Go on the bench, spending an incredible 1 day, 14 hours and 19 minutes on his arse, while Chris Wood scores for fun and Sean Dyche chews on gravel. Chelsea, Emerson Palmieri Let's be honest, what was the point in Chelsea signing Emerson from Roma? The Blue spent ages chasing the left-sided Brazilian and he'd only played an incredible 15 minutes of Premier League football until his start against Burnley midweek. Costing 20 million euros, Emerson has so far spent 705 minutes on the bench, which is amazing considering he only signed in January. Meanwhile, the player who replaced Kennedy is absolutely flying at Newcastle, so another great piece of business by the Stamford Bridge hierarchy. Crystal Palace, Papa Soiree. Ever since that horrific car crash on the 11th of September 2016, Papa Suarez's Premier League minutes have been non-existent. It took 11 months for the left-back to return to training, and this season he's yet to play even a single minute of league football, spending 16 full games on Roy Hodgson's bench, which equates to one full day. Then again, considering he could have lost his career or even worse his life, Suarez will just be happy to be him back in the matchday squad, never mind playing. Everton, Umar Nias You've got to feel sorry for Umar Nias, his face has just never seemed to fit at Goodison Park, even when he's been playing well. The striker finally hit some form this season after the Toffees failed to add a striker capable of replacing Romelu Lukaku, scoring 7 goals for the club, only to be back on the bench as soon as Cheng Tosin arrived. Nias has started the past 6 games on the bench and despite his goal scoring exploits, will probably shunned out the Goodison door this summer. Poor bloke. Huddersfield, Colin Kwana Nothing about Colin Kwana makes him look like a footballer, yet alone a winger, but so many times this season he's been David Wagner's man off the bench, with 13 of his 25 appearances coming as a sub. And what kind of impact has he had? Not a great one to be honest, providing 4 assists and a big fat 0 goals. In fairness to the German though, he's not been that much of a bench warmer, it's just David Wagner's rotated his squad so much that he's probably been the most consistent figure on the Terriers' bench, with the likes of Michael Heffler also spending a lot of time as a sub without playing, despite being a key player last season. Leicester, Alexander Dragovic The Austrian defender was brought in as cover for Wes Morgan and Harry Maguire, and that's exactly what he's been. Dragovic has made 8 appearances so far, coming in when Captain Morgan went down with an injury, but as soon as the Jamaican was back fit, Dragovic was back on the bench, spending the majority of his English holiday sat down watching every player in blue try to give the ball to Riyad Mahrez before Jamie Vardy scores. I hope he took lots of photos to show his friends back at Bayer Leverkusen. Liverpool, Dominic Solanke Poor Dominic Solanke, he probably thought moving to Liverpool was going to be the start of his flourishing Premier League career, having finally escaped the grasp of a Chelsea team that refused to truly give youth a chance. But no, Solanke has had to watch on from afar while Sadio Mane, Mo Salah and Bobby Firmino score for fun, as the young English striker wonders what it actually feels like for the ball to hit the back of the net, having failed to register a Premier League goal for the Reds. 
In fairness to Solanke, he's not had much of a chance, spending one day, 14 hours and 24 minutes on the bench. Manchester City Yaya Toure The birthday cake enthusiast used to be a key component in the Manchester City side, but ever since Pep Guardiola arrived at the Etihad, the Ivory Coast Internationals just had to chill on the bench eating the cake he bought himself, not sharing with anyone because he's still bitter about the whole thing. Yaya Tour has been in reserve all season, with David Silva and Kevin De Bruyne transitioning into out and out central midfielders, meaning Tour has had to spend a total of one day, 10 hours and 16 minutes on the bench so far this season. Manchester United, Marcus Rashford. Shearer started the game against Bournemouth midweek, but Marcus Rashford has had to settle for coming off the bench for most of the season, starting just 15 times for the Red Devils, while Alexis Sanchez tries his best to convince everyone that he really, really, really does deserve that 300 grand a week. And who says Jose Mourinho stops young talent from developing? Newcastle United, Javier Manquillo. In fairness to Javier Manquillo, the Spaniard was a Newcastle regular for the first half of the season, first slotting in at right back in place of DeAndre Yedlin, then taking up residency at left back while Paul Dummett was injured. But ever since the left back returned, Manquillo hasn't had a look in, much to the delight of the Geordies, who hadn't been too impressed by a player who flopped at rival Sunderland the year before. But he's always there on the bench, just waiting for that one chance when another Newcastle fullback gets injured. Until then, he'll always be on the bench. Southampton Manolo Gabbiadini Remember when Manolo Gabbiadini arrived in the Premier League and couldn't stop scoring, so we all heralded him as the greatest striker to ever grace planet Earth? I do, such a simpler time. But no, the Italian now resides on the Southampton bench, while the Republic of Ireland striker Shane Long does his best impression of a striker. Stoke City, Charlie Adam the bench is probably the best place for Charlie Adam, otherwise he's just wiping out his opponents with the naughtiest tackles known to man, or trying to score from the halfway line so that the boys on match of the day can wank over him for about 10 minutes on how good he is at striking a ball. So to avoid that, first Mark Hughes and then Paul Lambert have sat the Scott down on the bench for a grand total of one day, 12 hours and 39 minutes so far this season. Swansea City, Luciano Narsing. The Dutch winger is the epitome of an impactless impact sub, often brought off the bench to change a game with his pace and dribbling ability, only to fail miserably, providing just one goal and zero assists so far this season. Of the 16 appearances he's made, Narsing has only started 5 of them and has spent one day, 8 hours and 49 minutes on the bench. Tottenham, Fernando Llorente Poor Fernando Llorente was the man tasked with being Harry Kane's backup this season, a role that no one has really been able to do justice in years gone by. But on the face of it, Laurenti looked like a great acquisition from Pochettino and a player who was more than capable of filling in for Kane if the superstar striker was unavailable. Sadly though, Kane has had a brilliant season in front of goal and when he was struck down with injury, Laurenti couldn't take his chance and has instead been on the Spurs bench for one day, 11 hours and 9 minutes so far this season. Don't worry Fernando, it'll all be over soon. Watford, Stefano Okaka when it comes to Hornet strikers, Troy Deeney and Andrew Gray have been pretty poor this season, mustering up just 9 goals between them. So if they're Watford's best two strikers, it doesn't say much for Stefano Okaka, who has started just twice all season. The Italian forward has just one goal to his name, and has had to settle for the odd appearance off the bench, getting the occasional leg stretch in whilst failing to make any sort of impact. West Brom, James McLean I'll be honest, this surprised me, as James McLean has spent one day, nine hours and nine minutes on the West Brom bench this season, and he has me think he was part of the problem as the baggy slumped towards the championship. But no, while the likes of Jake Livermore and Gregor Kokoviak run around like headless chickens, James McLean has been sitting on the bench, wondering who he can piss off first as soon as he gets on the pitch. And finally, West Ham, Jordan Hugel. Remind me, why on earth did West Ham spend 10 million quid on Jordan Hugel if they had no intentions of playing him? Since swapping Preston for the Hammers, Hugel has yet to start a Premier League game and has played an unprecedented 12 minutes of Premier League football, spending the rest of his time on the bench trying to avoid getting lynched by an enraged fan. Surprisingly, he can actually select the striker as West Ham's signing of the season, but at this rate, even his mother wouldn't vote for him. So that's every Premier League club's bench warmer. Let us know your thoughts in the comments below. Thanks for watching and don't forget to like, share and subscribe.